Hello, this is Dr. Demichak. I'd like to take a little time and explain my overall uh, understanding of inflammatory metabolic conditions and how they're affecting your health. What you're seeing in front of you is a uh, matrix that I use to help me uh, follow and understand a lot of the developing uh, research. This sheet here actually uh, has its roots going back about 20 years in HIV disease and has since in the last I would say 10 to 15 years uh, morphed into a diagram that really helps people understand why so many of us are ill. And basically what we're beginning to understand is this phenomenon called metabolic inflammation. That This process uh, is common amongst many, many of us and is being triggered by a variety of different things. It is this process that, as you can see down here in this lower box, that actually fuels and triggers things like diabetes and Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, heart disease, many of the common forms of cancer like breast, colon, prostate, uterine cancer, uh, other things, macular degeneration, chronic kidney disease. It's the same process that also prevents people from recovering from concussions, can fuel or trigger autoimmune disorders, is a constant source of inflammatory pain, prevents people from recovering from depression. Now, what this really means is that all of these problems down here would not have occurred if it weren't for this metabolic inflammation. And that so basically these problems down below are kind of symptoms of this problem. But what is metabolic inflammation? So we normally think of inflammation in a bad way. Inflammation uh, in reality is, a, is how your body fights infection and repairs tissue. Uh, we often re that's often referred to technically as tissue inflammation. That's when things get red and swollen and so forth. Metabolic inflammation is a little different. This is when chemicals produced by the immune system, and these are called cytokines, are produced in a dysregulated way and in often very high concentrations. These chemicals then will penetrate the cells, activate a subcomponent called NEF kappa B, which then migrates into the DNA and actually will turn on the gene if you so carry one, say for instance for diabetes. That NEF kappa B can cause so much stress in the DNA that we believe it can actually cause uh, mutations to occur if you don't have a pre-existing one. So meta without metabolic inflammation, for instance, people who carry genes for diabetes would never ever develop that disorder. And if they do develop diabetes mellitus, we know they have to have metabolic inflammation as part of that process. So because of that then, where, if that's the single focus, where does that come from? And you see that up here across this top end. These are the general sources, the way I categorize them, of metabolic inflammation. Uh, most of these are arising out of our modern culture. Over here is common as tobacco and autoimmune disorders with a few other uh, kind of what I call odds and ends. A very common scenario or, or process is called SIBO or small intestine bacterial overgrowth. This is prevalent maybe in 50 to 75 percent of the population. Here is damage to the autonomic nervous system, particularly the parasympathetic branch, which controls inflammation via the vagus nerve at the spleen. And when that's broken, you have out of control immune system uh, inflammation. And then the last part is what's called overnutrition. And this is a form of damage done to the cells of your body by excess nutrients. An example I like to say is uh, when you take a multivitamin, your body will absorb some of that and then you'll excrete that in the urine and you can s literally see the bright yellow color in the urine. But if some people take too much vitamin A, uh, you can't easily get rid of it and it will uh, deposit in the optic nerves of your eyes and you'll actually go blind. So that's a form of overnutrition. The ones, the areas in particular that we're worried about is overnutrition from just calories and excess calories in general, uh, fructose, carbohydrates in general, 
as well as linoleic acid, the primary constituent in vegetable oil. So when you look at this whole array of things, they are all contributing to the primary trigger or driving force of all of these conditions down here. So my focus in my practice is to do everything I can to deal with these top level issues, make those go away, so in turn we reduce metabolic inflammation and as a consequence of that we see marked improvement in the vast majority of all of these conditions with many of them actually uh, going into complete remission. So I hope that helps you understand a little bit about the approach in my practice. We hope to see you soon. Thank you.